Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What on earth happened in my absence? Hmm. Now calls for a good old well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Today, I mean, we had a mini war over the weekend. Got to wait for the markets to close. Yeah, just so that we don't disrupt anything. And then Monday, bright and early, everything's all good. But that's not really the tone across the board. Most of the street, when I say that, Wall Street, are in essence on edge. They're like, is it too good to be true? What's the story? Are they going to retaliate or is it? That's it. Can we see it as done and dusted? There's nothing to be worried about. Back to the usual routine of waiting to decide whether or not the Fed's going to be cutting the interest rates. Hmm. It's always going to leave us with that question. But, there is a little but. Where are the whales gone? Honestly, where are the whales? The Bitcoin whales. According to sources, they're not around. They're not in the old accumulation phase. We're going to be diving into that article just so that we can establish exactly what we can expect from Bitcoin. I mean, Bitcoin did take a little bit of a shoe bag to the downside. And I was witnessing this whilst I was driving and I was like, should I just go live now? I mean, it is kind of late, but... What's the signal like? Can I really go live in the dark next to a herd of sheep? And I was really contemplating it, but I just didn't go live in the end. I didn't think it was that much of a big drop. But in today's live stream, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break it all down. We're going to work out what Bitcoin is going to get up to. Why is it important that we pay attention to this logic about the whales and why it's very important for us to understand why the stock market is going to be tested. Because we have got news announcements coming from the good old banks and it's earnings season. Yes, earnings season. And if Bitcoin is dropping due to geopolitical tensions, then it's only subject to whatever happens in the stock market. I mean, come on. Bitcoin in principle should not have dropped over the weekend, if anything should have gone up. Investors should be like, oh my God, it's going to be terrible for the stock market. Oh, I need to get rid of this. I need to get rid of this risk. Let me go and diversify and hedge myself on Bitcoin and start buying Bitcoin. Well, the majority of the new accumulated market cap is courtesy of Wall Street. And I've said this to you all. Now that Wall Street's in the game of cryptocurrency, chow chow, decentralization in the bin. Sam, order a taxi for decentralization. The concept's done. Sam? Sam's not available. That guy's going to get it so bad. I, I'm, I'm not happy about it. He, he usually says, yeah, nothing. I, I, will, I will deal with Sam. Anyways... Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Mad love and respect for passing through. You've tuned into Tino at Traders Reality. Welcome to the madness. Let's get with the program and understand exactly what we have got going on. Here we go. So, firstly, hmm, oil steadies. Treasuries dip as Iran stresses ease. Markets wrap up. Now, Traders are betting that Israel-Iran conflict may be contained. Now, there's something that I done over the weekend for the Platinum members to help them understand what we can expect moving forward. And something has happened that has not happened for a very long time. Gold is outperforming the US bonds. That's a problem. That is a huge problem. So before we get into it all, let me explain something to you. When gold, and naturally gold is deemed as a safe haven, okay? Don't worry, I've got Bitcoin. Don't worry about Bitcoin. Gold is deemed as a safe haven for investors, but so is the US government bond. 
The problem that we've got now, guys, is the US bonds are going down or have been going down, but gold has been going up. So hold on a second. If the bonds, which are deemed as a very safe investment, are going down, that means no one wants bonds. And gold is going up. That means people want gold. That means the peg of gold with the bonds, it's not there. And it's been decades since it's last happened. That's telling you investors don't even want dollars anymore. We've got ourselves a bit of a situation. That narrative is going to help us understand what we can expect. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you now, we're in a commodity run. Commodities are going to start exploding sooner or later. Silver, up. Gold, up. Alum aluminium, aluminium, up. Not aluminum, up. Palladium, up. Wheat, up. Corn, up. Coffee. Oh. Sorry. That was Sam's fault because he's gone and put my cup there. Anyways, but you get the idea. So now we go back into the chart over here and we can see that, okay, maybe that if the Israel-Iran conflict is contained and oil steadies, then everything's good. Mm, kind of stops there, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. <clears throat> where we are in the stock market is going to serve us and help us understand what Bitcoin is likely to get up to. In front of you, as of Friday, the NASDAQ and the S&P have collectively picked up seven NASDAQ, seven distribution days, forgive me, and nine on the S&P. And that's right there, seven and nine. That tells me that selling is increasing on a day-to-day -day basis on the NASDAQ and the S&P. Investors' exposure is starting to come down because two weeks ago, this was between 80 to 100%. Now it's at 40 to 60% and the uptrend is now under pressure. Look at what, well, beforehand, there was 480 stocks that were down on volume, but only 34 up. That's not consistent with bull markets. You need to have more stocks breaking out and volume being higher than you do have with stocks going down. We don't want that. So we could be on the point where things could get a little bit tricky for Bitcoin. Why? Because the same people that are investing in stocks are the same people investing in the ETFs. And likewise, those who have recently come into the ETF of Bitcoin are effectively going to be thinking, you know what? Hold on a second. This Bitcoin thing's going up and it's going down. There's absolute madness happening across the board. What are we going to do about it? Well, I want to actually protect myself and minimize any exposure. Will you wake up, please? get to that in a second. Moving forward. Oh, I've done it again. Here we go. Today's topic, right? The whales. Now, based on on-chain analytics, it's suggesting that whales aren't really coming into Bitcoin, okay? Why is it doing this? Why are you doing this to me? Not now. Not now. I really don't need this. I really don't need this. Not now. Please. Please stop it. You son of a gun. Or just look at Bitcoin for the time being. The on-chain analytics are suggesting that whales, in terms of their accumulation, are not present as they were before. Now, we do have a halving event coming into action. Could this drop to the downside be the star of the halving event? Okay. I said this today, that maybe this short-term war between Iran and Israel, all of that madness. Wow, look at this. I'll wait for it. It's just like nothing seems to want to work for me. It just absolutely shocks my, the, the life out of me, man. Like, well, at least, uh-oh. 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 Here we go. At least book map's working. <laughs> the, the, wh what I'm trying to say here, guys, based on the information we've got from Coindesk, which is absolutely, I just don't understand why it's doing this. You're really hurting my soul. My computer's completely froze. I think it's because I needed to restart it. 
There's probably an update that is due. Anyways, whilst we're waiting for Bitcoin to do its thing. If whales are going to accumulate, all right, we'd want them to accumulate at very specific points. So here in front of you is the coin ank. The coin ank is suggesting a wave of buying coming into play. So the news is not bearish. This is not bearish. Remember, retail will look at these on-chain analytics and think, hmm, whales aren't really accumulating yet. We're seeing Bitcoin marking up and the whales aren't accumulating yet. No, we don't want to see whales accumulating whilst Bitcoin's moving up. You don't want that. You want to see accumulation when it's going down. That's what we want to see. Going into the actual article here. Happy days. We're back to business. Look at this here. So this was done on the daily time frame. OK, and you can see right here that strong dip demand after March the 20th dip. We saw the interest from the whales coming into play right here, okay? Then it says whales are sat on the fence whilst Bitcoin is pulling back to this zone. Now, this is what's got me interested in this. Why would whales be offering or buying Bitcoin from here to only sell it from here? Why would they be buying from here to maybe only selling it from here? Why did we see interest from this point for them to only sell off here, what does that suggest? Well, this could be the logic of the 2020 principle, if we were to put that into perspective. What do we mean by that? Well, let's just look at it like this. If they're buying from these points, so let's just go over to the daily time frame to put things into perspective, all right? If they're buying from these two price points, one and two, but they're not really doing anything from here, okay? That could only mean that there's nothing happening in the chart to grant the idea of whales stepping in and buying. All right. Who's selling first? Well, let's just have a look at what we've got here. This is the miners position index. So we've check we're checking in on this just to see where we are with that. And looking at things, you can see that miners aren't really selling. Interesting, huh? Now, I I'm going to be of the understanding that... When miners are selling, there has to be someone who is a whale that is also a miner. So if the miners aren't really selling, the whales aren't going to be expected to buy in principle. So we can only, only take the logic and assume that is Bitcoin actually in a point of discount? Well, if you remember last week, I said to you all that Bitcoin needs to show promise inside of this range. Look at how they tapped that point and reversed from it. Did anyone take any longs from the 60K zone? I'd love to know that. And what I mean by longs, I'm talking about the holders loading up on Bitcoin in this range because everyone right now is relying on the idea that Bitcoin is going to move up from this point. OK, but Bitcoin has successfully taken the highs once, twice, three times. And unfortunately, the third time they've rejected that point quite aggressively. So it looks like we could be in a state of accumulation with Bitcoin in this range. But we have too much happening this week that could compromise Bitcoin. Now, let me put things into perspective for you all. OK, what's going on here? What's going on? Events, you're thinking too much, prop stocks media. What's going on? What's going on in here? Why? I couldn't. Oh, okay, I asked you a question. My days, what a guy. The point is also the point of the mid channel with the weekly and the basis of the Elliott wave structure I've been talking about. Okay, zigzag. I know you like to kick with the Elliott wave and the Wyckoffs and all of that stuff. In my honest opinion, I'm of the belief, right, that 90% of all right, so here's here's an example. Um, Nicholas Darvis, he was a dancer, but he came up with the concept of the Darvis box principle, okay? And they said that he was actually able to make $2 million back, back then, okay? And he did that all by telegrams. He'd write to his broker or try and make a call to him, but most of the time it was done written. He'd send his order over to his broker. His broker would buy it for him. Now, he made $2 million. Now, his logic was that as price, okay, 
comes from a range. So here's an example. You've got 55,000 here, and then you've got 52,000 right there. Darvis would be paying attention to how price behaved inside of this range. He would then make buys on the idea of it breaking away from a specific point. So he would be buying if it broke this price point. Happy days, okay? And that's where the box theory came into play, where you might have heard of the Darvis box. So the same principle again. It goes up and down inside here, happy days, and then shift out. Now, they are all trying to say that the only reason why Darvis came up with this logic and why it works so well is because Darvis was involved in one of the biggest bull markets of the time. So it was always going to work for him in this box theory. But the box principle does have weight to it, depending on the time frame that you are trading. Okay? Now, going back to what I was saying about this, it says here that if the whales aren't accumulating Bitcoin, then we can only make the assumption that there's no interest for them to buy it just yet. Well, that's what you would think with this. And then people or retail would only come to the assumption and say, hold on a second, if they're not buying, then that means they want Bitcoin to be cheaper. That's principally what we would expect, okay? But let's just park this idea for a split second, okay? You've come into this life thinking, Tina is bearish. Bleh. We can't use those words. We, we shouldn't use those words anymore, all right? Bullish and bearish. Second someone says bullish or bearish to me, Retail mentality, okay? So I have to be careful with what I say because I don't want to be challenging a retail trader because retail traders are already sporadic in their nature. They are going to be a bit crazy with me and be emotional and start thinking, excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. They're going to start thinking, this guy doesn't believe Bitcoin is going to be bullish or bearish. How could he? How could he not? I read in my book on Amazon that bullish means... It's a generic term, but it's a psychological and an emotional term, okay? When someone says to me they are bullish, they are effectively trying to reinstate the idea of why they should stay bullish. So they will go to the news and look for it. I mean, in bullish sentiments, we've got here from the UK, get away from me. UK to issue a new crypto stablecoin legislation by July. Wow. So the UK is starting to get into the game of cryptocurrency. The UK will issue new legislation for stable coins as well as crypto staking exchange and custody by June or July this year. We also have the Ethereum ETF. We also have Hong Kong now coming out with the idea that we can now get involved in a Bitcoin and a spot Ethereum ETF. Happy days, ladies and gentlemen. That's wonderful news. But this week... We have all of this news coming out, all the earnings for Goldman Sachs, Charles Schwab. We've got m and Bank Corporation. Go to the next day, Tuesday. We've got United Health Corp Group, Johnson Johnson, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley. Uh, who else have we got? Northern Trust Corporation, Interactive Brokers. So we've got, you know, all banks, it's all financial companies declaring their earnings this week. On top of that, you also have the core retail sales, which has just come out. Welcome to inflation, ladies and gentlemen. Core retail sales are up 1.1% month on month for the US. The manufacturing index is down. That's okay. We can deal with that. They projected it to be higher, but they were wrong. They projected it to be lower. They were wrong. They projected it to be high, well, lower. They were wrong. Retail sales are coming in. What does that say? People spending money. What does that mean? Fed's going to be a bit reluctant to cut the interest rates. What does that mean? Well, it means that if and only if people can't see a scope in the future for the Fed cuts to be happening, they're only going to be sticking to the likes of gold. OK, let's just get rid of this. They're going to be sticking to the likes of gold. And they ain't going to be picking up no bonds. Whoa, did you just see that? See what I mean about the inversion? Bonds down, gold up. They don't like your dollar anymore. They're not interested in it. And that's evident with the relationship of gold against the US bonds. That means that we've got a problem because this bad boy keeps on going up. This bad boy is the two-year yield. Government is getting a bit desperate, especially when you can pick up 5% on a two-year we got issues. That's not me trying to alarm you. No, not at all. Because we are only going to be in this instance for a short period of time because there's only so long that the United States can maintain the yields being so high. But because gold is going up, 
That's a problem. We need to see investors not going into gold for so long. We want to see them going into the bonds. We want to see them actually staying in cash because there is some element of faith in the US dollar. But it's not there. That's the problem we've got. So when people are saying, yeah, there could be a potential for a black swan event. In my opinion, you can't you can't predict a black swan event. It just happens. But I believe the black swan has been prepared. So it's a ticking time bomb. That's it. And that's something that could be happening. Logic would say that if it's not going to kick well for fear, what's the alternative? And who has set who has set a precedence in the marketplace? It's Bitcoin. So it only makes sense. But we've got to wait to see if that's going to be the case, because unfortunately, Bitcoin is made up of this BS right here. All of these big participants are buying up the Bitcoin. Now you've got the same thing happening in Hong Kong. Now you've got the biggest investors are going to get access to Bitcoin, which is why you can appreciate sailors picking up as much Bitcoin as possible because they're all picking it up. Goodbye, decentralization. Done. So what does that mean for you? Well, when we go in to look at Bitcoin, we then say to ourselves, hold on a second, man. Is now, is now a good time to buy Bitcoin? Are we back where we were historically with Bitcoin? Like, let's be honest now, guys. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are having the same feeling about these all-time highs in comparison to what the last all-time high was. Are you guys feeling Bitcoin's done with the all-time highs? Because we got we got a halving in five days. And they're even saying that the halving event itself is not going to potentially bring the interest that they want. Yeah? Where are your heads at? I've got a couple of comments here that someone wants me to look into. Here we go. Um, thank you, King O King. Can you check Skid? Skid on Sol will be the first ten dollar meme coin. Please check it. Let me make sure what we're getting involved in here. Let me make sure. Let's have a look at this. I'm gonna go check it out first elsewhere, just to make sure that we're actually good. Because I'm not going to start talking about something that isn't very, very good. Harving is going to dump. How many of you think it's going to dump? Yeah, apparently it's Friday. Okay. Friday is the day when they could actually, well, when the halving event per se is going to come into action. All right. But no, I really want to, <laughs> I really want to know where people's heads are at with that. Here we go. We've got a question. We've got an answer here, right? While this is happening. Um, I think there is a lot of retail market money on the sidelines that once we go to 80K, they will finally FOMO in. I know that story will crash before it makes some sore behavior. We already dumped. Don't get. Always wipe. <laughs> what a guy. What a comment. Don't get into skid. Wipe properly. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Anyways, let's just go and have a look at what's going on over here. Something that I wanted to draw your attention to, guys, because a lot of you... Are in line with commodities right now, okay? This is why you really want to be paying attention to what's happening behind the scenes. Because whilst everyone's losing their minds about Iran, Israel, whilst everyone's focusing on Bitcoin, whilst all that things are happening, okay? Look at this. Do you remember that law that Biden passed? Well, he's trying to pass that fund, which actually did, to effectively start getting U.S. companies to be the chip makers and have less of a resilient, less of a reliance on Taiwan, okay? Because then you've got China wanting to knock on the door and be like, yo, we, we want this plot, okay? We've had too many interventions overseas, Russia, Ukraine, Iran, Israel, all right? China's sat behind the scenes thinking, mm, man, I want to, Taiwan, man, we could just go in. 
We could just go in and just take it, man. And then we own the semiconductor index in principle. Samsung has effectively got around 6.4 billion in grants for chip plants. Well, what do they make these chips out of? Gold? Silver? Maybe aluminium? All these semiconductors, all these phones come with rare earth metals, commodities. All right? Money is being pushed into the US. Now, if you're going to start getting invested in stocks, okay? Qualcomm, Broadcom, LAM Research, Analog Devices, okay? Micron Technology, Applied Opti Electric Electronics, Monolithic Power Systems, on Semi Microchip Technology. These are the lists of companies listed in the United States stock market, okay? They want to keep it in house. The daddy is NVIDIA, okay? But with this, you want to dive not into the companies that are going to buy the chips. You want to get involved in the companies who are going to create the chips. You've got to look at it in terms of a product. If I want to get involved in jewelry, what do I do? Well, do I want to make it? Okay, yeah, I do want to make it. So where do I go? Well, I need to go and get myself some gold. I need to go and get myself some silver. I've got to go get myself some platinum, okay? So I'll go to my producers. Hello, Mr. Producer. I've got $6 billion and I want to start my own jewelry store. Can you help me? Well, 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 yeah, okay. So who's the company I'd get the gold from? That company is stock A. What about the silver? That company is stock B. What about the um, platinum? That is company stock C. Okay, cool. Well, what are you trying to create? Well, I want to create this. I'll give them my design. And they say, right, you're going to need X amount of gold, X amount of silver, X amount of platinum. No problem. Um, how much is that going to cost me? That's going to cost you around two and a half billion. Thank you very much. I'm going to send that contract over there. Once I then get that, I'm going to do whatever I can. Now that I've got my organic source, I'm then going to start getting it cut up, get the people to actually construct what I want as a jewelry maker per se, right? Then I've got the end product. I'm now going to sell it. So even though NVIDIA will see the benefit from this because they would logically go to the supplier of the chip maker in terms of materials, they would then make the chips and say, right, we're going to put them inside of our own thing and then we're going to mark up price and sell. Happy days. You start with the organic. This is an advert to get you to think Go into companies that deal with semiconductors. Fine. But in order for these semiconductors, you want to find out who's behind the scenes of creating it so that they can sell it as a semiconductor. Some of the companies do it in-house. Some of them don't. But logic would say that you would think that NVIDIA, who's going to see the benefit of this benefit of having these semiconductor cash infusion, especially Samsung, like you're looking at Samsung now and you're thinking, should I invest in Samsung? Well, it all depends on where Samsung's going to go. Okay. That's how you have to think about investing. It's not just simply going into a stock because, oh, wow, Samsung's going to get up to 6.4 billion in US grants, up to. We don't know how much of it. Samsung could only get like 500 million. What's Samsung going to do? They're going to go take that 500 million and go and outsource wherever they need to get the materials or products from. The only way, when you see companies that are spoken about on headlines, the money's already been made. Okay. What you've got to do is you've got to say to yourself, hold on a second. If this is going to happen, then it means there's going to be a period of time where this money is going to be used. I've got to then think I need to go involve myself into companies that actually are going to benefit from this. The ones they don't talk about are the ones where the real stack is going to be earned. Okay. That's, that's how you have to see the stock market. Dow Jones himself. In order for him to understand where we were across in terms of investing, he would stand outside the factories and wait for smoke to come up. If he found that there was continuous smoke happening, it meant that there were contracts being taken by the company to produce the iron. Happy days or stainless steel, whatever it was. As long as those chimneys were going, he was investing. And that's how he was able to make his money. Standing outside a factory looking at the actual chimneys. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah? Same approach. Now, Bitcoin ain't doing nothing. Let's go and have a look at something that moves. 
S&P, nice. NASDAQ, nice. Moving back down, oops. Okay, we might have actually had some news. Hold on a second. Goldman Sachs, hold on. Have they declared their earnings? Hold on. GS, Goldman Sachs. Well, that's good news. Goldman Sachs has pumped. We've got a bit of a gap problem though. So they may have actually hit. Hold on. They've just opened, just opened. Gap up. So out of our markets, they've seen gap up. So it seems like it's a good thing for Goldman Sachs. Anyone got any light onto this? We're going down for the rest of the year, I fear. They beat them. Okay, so they beat estimates. That's good news. It's good news that, that Goldman Sachs are beating estimates. So let's just actually have a look at Goldman Sachs statistics and have a look at where we are with that. So let's just go here for a second. Here we go. All right, then. Oh, they have an update. Okay, here we go. So estimated. Reported was eight seventy nine. Estimated eight dollars and eighty three. Can anyone tell me what the actual reading was? Hold on. Oops. Goldman Sachs news. Goldman Sachs help profits jump twenty eight percent. Okay then. Wall Street Bank beats estimates by almost a billion as investment banking and trading arms report strong results. Uh, you know what that means? That means that they've based it all off their transactional activity. That's not good in my opinion. 28% first quarter strong performance by its trading business helped surge past analyst estimates. Said that the income for the first three months of the year was 4.1 billion, up from 3.2 earlier. Okay, the performance will help draw a line under challenging 12 months for Goldman in which results were hit by losses tied to its pullback from consumer lending. Okay, then. So, uh, trading revenues drove the quarterly profit beat. That's not good because we're going to get to an instance where the market's going to be like, what if I'm not going to be trading? I don't want to be trading anymore. I'm, I'm, con I'm concerned about the stock market. I want to sit in cash. Well, Goldman Sachs are going to get smacked across the face with that. They're not going to be earning as aggressively. They need to be, this is what the problem is with banks. They need to be selling financial products. But the Fed ain't giving us anything about when it's going to cut the interest rates because it's too expensive for them. Okay. Now let's go over to Bitcoin. I'm not doing anything. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions? No big sell orders on CoinAnk to take price up. Goldman Sachs reports. Here we go. Goldman Sachs reports. Share of 11.5. 11 11 okay, annualized return of com common equity of 14.4. Okay, that's fine. 28% is euphorism to 82 years. Okay, I'm not going to read that. <sighs> Trying to act like it's strong. This is the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. You want to know where, how the markets are reacting. Okay. I genuinely believe that this is sell the news event on Goldman Sachs. It's a sell the news event, quite frankly. When you think about it, you look at it and say to yourself, okay, right, we've had a big gap up, so it's done very well. So there is an initial reaction to this, okay? But the bigger picture prevails. We don't know where we are with the Fed. And this week, you can see already that inflation is going to be a problem. So these could be the guys that are getting their money out of um, Goldman Sachs, okay? Because they will close this gap. They will most definitely look to close this gap at some point. It's all going to be based on how many people are going to get shaken out or, in essence, start quickly coming in to buy up Goldman Sachs because they are seeing a good return. But on their investment trading, investment banking and trading activities, that's transactional. OK, and if we're going where we're going in terms of the marketplace and the stock markets are overly extended, we're going to have ourselves a little bit of a problem right now because of everyone's risk. Now, let's go over to the S&P for a second. This thing is starting to roll over. OK, and we've got big sales come up, big sales come up, big sales come up. OK, well, big buys in principle. The bids are coming in and they're offering out bids in, offering out bids in, offering out. They're realizing a return too soon on their bid orders. That means that they're looking to drop it down. That's how they're making their money. They buy up when it drops. They sell back into it to keep the investors alive with the belief that you're buying the dip. And there is this conversation about buying the dip quite a bit now with Bitcoin. Unfortunately, Bitcoin hasn't necessarily dipped, ladies and gentlemen. Has it really dipped? Let's be honest now. Has Bitcoin dipped? I want your thoughts. Just go over and have a look. Has Bitcoin really dipped? 
Because until Bitcoin clears the all-time high, we're stuck in this range, man. And this is what frustrates me about Bitcoin. Now, day traders, you have a, you have a, a, a winning day, in my opinion. Everything's all good for day trading. For example, today, I took a couple of trades today on the S&P, okay? Let's go to the S&P right now. And the range that I was trading was this. I'll show you. And what I done was I, as an exercise for the guys in the platinum tier, when it comes to live trading, I'm usually dictating what my thought process was. But what I done was I recorded this video and I'm going to quickly show you what I'm talking about. Click that bad boy and go into it. Now. <clears throat> so this is the video right here and I'm getting it uploaded onto the website so that the guys can understand. What I do is I like to record the depth of market from the start of the day all the way through to the end of the day. That's my Netflix, all right? And the reason I do that is because I want to understand how to really step up and just really dive into understanding the depth of market. Every day I am learning, every single day, okay? I have to. I have to make myself believe that I can learn something new. So that means I'm going to be looking for something different. Okay. Now, this in this video here, I'm waiting to see if price is going to go up towards this vector candle recovery. At the time, I had placed a trade on several accounts, but I only had um, one account visible because I couldn't put them all up on there. Okay. Now, the actual result of this video, because this video itself is, I'm not talking at all. I'm not talking at all. Right. And all I'm doing is effectively focusing on the bonds down here and the actual depth of market of the S&P. And the purpose of this exercise for the platinum members is to train their eyes to notice how price evolves and develops and goes towards a specific point, which in this instance, I copied. I took a trade to apply that principle. But I haven't said a word because I want the guys to understand and ask themselves the question and have the dialogue with themselves because they ain't going to get it if I'm telling them. I have to put them in a position where it's making them think, why did that happen? They can then reverse. They can go back and watch what were the orders at this point in time so that they then can look at this and say, well, the next time I see a red vector candle that hasn't been recovered by the s and I'm logically going to be thinking of this video because they'll do the same thing again. Now, the end result of it, as you can see, was they came back into that, okay? At the time, I had copied the trades across the board and I only I kept it light. I didn't want to try and put too much pressure on on the actual accounts because I don't want to be taking too much risk because this was before the news came out. And I finalized the positions when we got to around 10 past one. So I wasn't too keen on actually doing that. Where is it right here? I think I closed the position off. And then I opened a couple of more trades on momentum. I closed the position. Yeah, it was just yeah, yeah, 10 past 10 past one right there. Okay which effectively put us in just a good start so far to the month. We only made just $1,500 today, but the, that's the start of the market. But what I'm looking for from the S&P right now, as you can see, look, that was before the news announcements. They made the move up and then they've shifted out to the upside. I could have held onto the trade, but I don't want to sit through this whipping and whacking of price. OK, so that video is going to get uploaded for the guys and they can just watch that in their own time. But I've got hours of footage of the depth of market that is just running on play and I'm watching it back. And I'm not even necessarily taking trades because I'm looking for key things that happen in the depth of market. For example, we pull this up here. Look at this. Look at this. I'm paying attention to all of this. And you've seen me do it on the lives where I'm taking a few trades to put the logic together. We're at the point of control yet again. Okay. And we're seeing price right here wanting to try and make a little bit of a move to the upside. Let's just try and take advantage of a little bit of a flavor. We've got momentum coming. I'm looking to try and take a little bit of a long on the S&P. I just saw these guys loading up on offers. All right. So we're going to try and see if we can exploit a nice little long above the point of control. Here we go. Keep on going. Make the flip up. Lift that. Pulling off the ask. Keep doing it. Keep pulling off the ask. Mm, keep pulling off the ask. Goldman Sachs is fueling the rally to the upside for the markets. Get above the point of control, then I'm good. Otherwise, I'm going to get out. I'll be burning a little bit of profit, but that's fine. I just want to see them try and make the switch up because I just saw that 380 on the offer side. So that tells me someone's coming in to bid into those guys. Ugh, not really good. I'm not too keen on this. Hold on. May have actually entered prematurely. Oh, some bids are coming in. There she is. 
Keep going. Get above the point. They transact at the point of control, but there's less buying on the point of control, which is a concern for me. So I've got to be very cautious with this. 358 right there. Okay, we're good. Are we good? Are we going? Are we going? Are we going? Come on, don't come back down. Don't fucking do it. Come on. You just popped. There you go. Did anyone see that 500 order? That 335. That's good. Someone's bidding. Keep going. Sweep. 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 So this is on a funded account. Come on. Make the flip. There she goes. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's a wave. A nice wave. Momentum going to the top end. Here she goes. Keep going. Move. 280. 192. 500. They're crafty. They're coming in. They're bidding and holding. But I've got to get out of that because I don't want to take... So there you go. We made a nice little well, 125 about $500-ish move to the upside. Just understanding this behavior here. Just that. Where's my chart? Where is it? What did we just use? We didn't use anything. And look at it go. May have been a bit too quick for you, but I saw that 500 appear down here. When someone steps in, 500 on the bid side. They're encouraging people to sell. Trap the sellers. yippee ki -yay to the upside. Goldman Sachs has just smashed it. We're only in the market 10 minutes. Someone's waking up from scratching their balls and thinking, oh, what's going on? Let me have a... Oh my God, Goldman Sachs won. That could have been that order. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Does that make sense? No, it's not an auction. Well, no, this is the S&P. This is, this is the S&P, all right? Does that make sense, guys? I hope, I hope that helps. A little bit of action right there. Happy days. I said I shouldn't. I didn't want to do that, but I ended up doing it. How would you do the same without the DOM? Is it possible? Yes. It is possible. Because what you just witnessed was a vector candle. a vector candle. All right? You can do that. Oh, hold on a second. What did we just go back into? The red vector candle. Red vector candle. Green vector candle. Now that we've recovered that point, we've got to get out. No holding on. There's no, there's no moon boy when you're trading like that, ladies and gentlemen. You ain't got time to be trading like that. No. I ain't about quickly. Go and take advantage of Bitcoin to the moon and all of this shit. You're having to really dive. It's why you, this is why you can't be trading on your phones. You can't do that. Depending if you're a swing trader, that's different. But my style of trading, I'm diving into the candlestick. I'm only in for a quick minute. That's it. What was that? Let me have a look. Here we go. That puts us now $1,898. $2,050 for the day after fees. Yeah, $151 in fees. 84% win rate. Happy days. Okay. But what, was, what, what account was that? That was 77. Let's just go to 70. No, that was 92. Let's just go to 92 for a second. What was that trade? So that was a $400 trade. We opened it at 22, so 14.39 and we got out at 14.40. So that was a $400 trade in less than wow. Literally less than a minute. Okay? Not even that. Just reading the depth of market. But remember, I've been watching the S&P all morning, so I'm familiar with the levels and the price points. OK, we've been sat in and around this 5,205, 5,207. I, I just pulled up the depth of market. And I just saw those orders and we were at the point of control. I just saw that shit there. I saw it. And then they started to make the move. OK. <clears throat> right. It's going to BTC. What's she doing? Interesting. So now that Bitcoin is trying to mark up after the news announcements, we've seen some consistency on the 50 EMA. Going into the daily time frame, just for a second. To my holders, today's a very important day in terms of the 5 and 13 EMA. Why? We have effectively got the drop. This is the test of the 5 and 13 EMA. In my opinion, there's two things you can do with this. 
You can either load up on Bitcoin in terms of DCA. But short term, take advantage of Bitcoin going above if it can clear above the 5 and 13 EMA. So hypothetically, 20% could be planted, not financial advice, a hypothetical scenario. 20% could be planted here. That next 20% could be planted here on the logic that Bitcoin can sustain the move higher. Get rid of those 20% if it makes it all the way up to here at 70K. Because it could also come back down again. All right. Start off with the 20 here. If Bitcoin does not go above the 5 EMA, which is this yellow line right here, okay? If it cannot get above that by the time we close today for the new daily candle, there might be a little bit of a problem with this area of resistance, okay? So please just be very careful. Do I think we're going to fill the big vectors to 51K? All day. All day long. Sorry. Sorry to piss on your fires, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? But that's the truth. I think that they will come back into these vector points because it could be on the logic of profit taking. We are close. And look at how many times we've hit them. One, two, three times. What does that tell you here? We got a bag of interest. Probably have a bit more down here. Because these guys, they keep stepping in. Now we assume it's for Bitcoin to sell, like to support. But what we're not really thinking is that's the lowest point that they're prepared to bid from so that they can make a profit on the move down. They're buying as it drops. They're selling it as it goes up. They are short term with their profits. They're not long term. I believe that they could actually go into this zone at some stage. And this is where we will really see the test of Bitcoin. And that means silly bids, big bids coming into Bitcoin here. Because that is, that's a big point, okay? So just, just keep that in your minds, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Cool. On your cornflakes. But Tino, haven't we already recovered one of those three vectors? Yes, we have recovered one of them and resisted away from it. Okay. When you look at this area, you can tell that there's some people are down here. They're down here. And they're looking up saying, can I come here, man? <laughs> Give me the orders, bro. Why are you buying up there? Come down here. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Do not buy when it's high. You buy when it's low. We're not really low. We're still high. Yeah? All right, and ladies and gentlemen, listen, mad love and respect for passing through today. I hope you've enjoyed it. You learned a thing or two. Be sure to like and subscribe on the way out. And don't be the dude waving to everyone. Say I'm long. All right? Take care of yourselves, gang. Mad love and respect. Thank you so much. I'm sorry it's so long. Take care of yourselves. Peace.